I've been mulling over a concept lately. It's called the trough of despair or the trough of disillusionment. If you look back at the history of technology, there are patterns that you can observe. And I think we're living through one right now. In a similar way that economies have boom and bust cycles, there's a similar pattern for new technologies. And it's been studied a lot. It even has a name. It's called the Gardner hype cycle. There are five stages to the cycle. Number one is called the technology trigger. The technology trigger happens when a new technology explodes onto the stage. There's a buzz, including news and press releases, murmurs on YouTube, demos at conferences. There are no actual applications yet, but there's a tangible hum that is growing in the background. Stage number two is called the peak of inflated expectations. This next stage is the peak of the hype cycle where this technology explodes and you hear about it everywhere. You can't avoid it. Everyone's talking about how it will change everything. New products and applications start releasing every day and you just can't keep up. Everything looks polished and promises the world. However, if you look a little closer, these products tend to overpromise and underdeliver. There are hundreds of new companies springing up as they all head to the gold rush. And that leads us to number three, which is called the trough of disillusionment. And this third phase is when the technology fails to live up to its promises. People start second guessing. Investors get nervous, they slow down their investments. People start reacting with skepticism to new product demos. Adoption, it slows, it even goes negative. Companies start going under, the news stops covering it. And that leads you to number four, which is the slope of enlightenment. This fourth phase is when the slow adoption and the slow improvement of the technology actually begins. It's slow, but it is real. The products get refined. The use cases get narrowed, but they become more effective. The slope of enlightenment is where the benefits of the technology become understood and accepted. And this leads us to the fifth and final stage, which is called the plateau of productivity. This is when finally the technology becomes mainstream and it sees widespread adoption, but it's not ultimately as disruptive as the hype cycle said it would be. The trough of despair describes a phase in the life cycle of a hype technology where after an initial surge of excitement and lofty promises, it fails to fully deliver on its transformative potential. And this happens when a technology achieves about 90% of its promised capabilities, but it struggles to bridge the final 10% needed for widespread disruption. This gap leads to disillusionment, reduced investment, and skepticism before eventual refinement and adoption. Here's what happens. New technologies explode onto the scene with bold claims of revolutionizing industries, improving lives, reshaping economies, and disrupting everything in sight. If you're observant, you can spot this cycle by noticing phrases like game-changing, revolutionary, this will replace every job, this makes, insert your industry here, irrelevant, this is as bad as it will ever be. If this sounds familiar, I bet you've seen some clickbait like this lately about AI. AI has promised to kill off the entire VFX industry for God's sake and within the year. This brings us to the next phase when the technology falls short due to technical limitations, scalability issues, or unforeseen complexities. It enters into this trough of despair where the enthusiasm wanes and critics highlight its shortcomings. This happens when the technology, which quickly hits 90% efficiency, really struggles to get to the 100%. Have you heard of hallucinations, anyone? So we are at a critical juncture. Technologies that enter this zone now enter a track that has two possible outcomes. Some technologies stagnate or they fail entirely, unable to overcome their limitations and they become obsolete. Others persist in this trough for years, finding limited use while struggling to achieve mainstream adoption. And a few eventually emerge through persistent iteration and they solve that last 10% challenge, whether that's reliability, affordability, or user acceptance, and they achieve significant impact. Let's quickly look at a handful of examples, and you can guess if they made it through the trough or not. Number one, virtual reality in the 1990s. In the early 90s, virtual reality was heralded as the future of entertainment, gaming, even social interaction. Companies like Sega and Nintendo announced VR headsets, and this fueled public imagination with visions of immersive digital worlds. The technology promised to transport users into fully interactive 3D environments, disrupting everything from gaming to education. The bubble. By 1995, VR systems like the Nintendo Virtual Boy and many more hit the market, backed by the massive media hype. Expectations soared as developers promised seamless, photorealistic experiences. And then it hit the trough. The reality was far less glamorous. Early VR systems suffered from low-resolution displays, clunky headsets, limited field of view, and motion sickness. 
The Virtual Boy, for instance, used a red and black monochromatic display that caused headaches and failed to deliver immersive experiences. Processing power was insufficient, and the systems were super expensive, often costing thousands of dollars. That final 10%, delivering comfortable, affordable, truly immersive experiences, it was unattainable with the era's technology. And by the late 1990s, VR faded from mainstream attention. Let's look at another example, self-driving cars from 2010 to the present. Autonomous vehicles have been touted as a game changer for transportation, promising safer roads, reduced traffic, and mobility for all. Companies like Tesla, Waymo, Uber, they've invested heavily with predictions of fully autonomous cars by the late 2010s. Sirens were sounded in the media about the imminent collapse of all jobs in the taxi industry and the trucking industry. And then we get to the bubble. In the mid-2010s, demos for self-driving cars navigating controlled environments fueled optimism. Elon Musk claimed that Tesla's vehicles would achieve full autonomy by 2018. Venture capital and public markets valued autonomous driving startups at billions, and they expected rapid deployment. And then we get to the trough. That final 10%, achieving reliable autonomy in complex real-world conditions, it just hasn't quite worked out yet. Unpredictable pedestrian behavior, adverse weather, regulatory hurdles, these remain unsolved. Public trust nosedived after high-profile accidents, such as Uber's 2018 fatal crash. As of 2025, fully autonomous vehicles remain in a prolonged trough with widespread adoption likely years or decades away. All right, let's look at number three, 3D television in the 2000s. In the late 2000s, 3D television was marketed as the next evolution of home entertainment, promising cinema-like immersive experiences in your living room. Major manufacturers like Sony, Samsung, Panasonic, they invested heavily in films like Avatar in 2009 amplified consumer interest in 3D technology. By 2010, 3D TVs were prominently featured at consumer electronics shows with broadcasters like ESPN launching 3D channels. The technology promised to transform how people watch movies, sports, and gaming, with predictions that 3D would become the standard for television. But then we get to the trough again. The final 10%, which was delivering a seamless, accessible, and enjoyable 3D experience, it proved insurmountable. 3D TVs required special glasses, which many viewers found cumbersome and uncomfortable. The content was limited, producing 3D programming was costly, and by the mid-2010s, consumer interest waned. Manufacturers like LG and Sony discontinued their 3D TV production, and the technology failed to emerge from the trough, pretty much dying as a mainstream product. Let's look at one last historical example, NFT crypto art. This is from 2021 through 2023. The convergence of AI-generated art and cryptocurrency-backed non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, in 2021 sparked a frenzy with claims that these technologies would revolutionize the art world. NFTs promise verifiable ownership and monetization on blockchain platforms like OpenSea, and high-profile sales such as Beeple's $69 million NFT artwork fueled visions of a new digital art economy. In 2021, the NFT market exploded, with trading volumes reaching $25 billion. Crypto art was hailed as a democratizing force for artists and collectors, and investors and celebrities poured money into NFT projects, expecting exponential growth and mainstream adoption. You all know where this is going. The final 10%, establishing long-lasting value, accessibility, and cultural acceptance, it proved elusive, and the NFT market had a spectacular crash in 2022 and 2023, Trading volumes dropped by over 90%, and many of the projects lost most of their value due to speculations, scams, and a lack of intrinsic utility. And as of 2025, AI NFTs linger in a prolonged trough, with most projects struggling to regain relevance or find financial viability. Okay, so those are the lessons from history. So the question is, where are we now? The trough of despair underscores the challenge of translating technological promise into reality. That last 10% often requires not just technical breakthroughs, but also infrastructure, regulatory framework, and user acceptance. New technology screams from the mountaintops. This time is different. This will change everything in the next six months. However, transformative technologies often take decades to mature if they succeed at all. And by understanding this trough of despair, we can better navigate the information that is flooding at us. Is generative AI for motion design in a trough of despair? Yes, I believe so. I would guess that generative AI for motion design is either entering or already in the trough of despair, but with a strong likelihood of surviving in some form. Here's why I say that. Generative AI tools like Runway ML, Adobe Firefly, Kling, Midjourney, etc., they've been hyped as game changers for motion design. 
promising to automate complex tasks like keyframing, rotoscoping, video generation from text prompts. The buzz around AI art was sky high with claims of revolutionizing entire workflows. But recent reports suggest a cooling off period. For example, Gardner notes that generative AI broadly has slid into the trough due to mismatched expectations, weak return on investment, and challenges in scaling practical applications. Motion design specific tools face massive issues. While they can generate impressive visuals, the output often requires significant human cleanup to meet professional standards, and features like lip sync or complex animation can feel wonky or unpolished. There's just something off about the results. The physics is a bit off. The humans seem a bit waxy. The movements are a bit too jerky or a bit too smooth and smeary. Nothing quite feels right to you on first glance. It's a bit unsettling. And this is the 90% problem. It's 90% there, but this gap between promise and delivery, it screams that we're entering through trough territory. And there's a change in the wind. I don't know if you've noticed it. It reeks of unrealized promises. How many times will we hear people say things like, it's not quite ready for production, but it's close, before we decide that it's never actually going to be ready? Let's be honest, the generative AI boom is starting to fizzle. Back in 2023, headlines screamed about AI revolutionizing economies with promises of boosting global GDP by 7%. Remember when AI was supposed to churn out Oscar-worthy animations and viral motion graphics? Yeah, it hasn't happened. A recent report points out that 30% of generative AI projects are being scrapped before they even leave the prototype stage. In motion design, tools like Runway ML can churn out quick video drafts, but designers are spending hours fixing clunky transitions or unnatural movements, and this negates the time-saving hype. Tools like Kling AI can generate very slick visuals, but they're often derivative, lacking the emotional depth or originality that humans bring to motion design and AI has not delivered a single iconic song, film, or animation. The problem? It's great at mimicking patterns, but it's terrible at the nuanced storytelling that defines great art. As the industry cools on the AI hype, executives are now questioning whether the tech is worth the energy bills and the ethical headaches. Other aspects of the tech are hitting a plateau as well. Scaling up models like GPT 4.5 barely improves the accuracy, despite ballooning expenses. Some of the updates are even causing more hallucinations, not less. And add to all this the ethical mess, the copyright issues, the biases in outputs, climate issues. It's no wonder that businesses are beginning to pull the plug. Generative AI is not dead, but it is stuck in a rut. So what happens next? It is anybody's guess but I believe that AI will most likely survive and be with us forever. I just think that the hyperbole has reached max levels and the reality is starting to set in. Art is not something you can shortcut. There are no easy buttons. Art is about so much more. It's a part of being a human. It's our experiences. It's the process, which is not easy. For me, AI going through the trough of disillusionment is a huge relief. I'm really glad that AI is not gonna take our jobs, at least for a while. That gives me more time to do what I love. And that is a beautiful thing. What do you think? Any insight would be amazing. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Do you think that I hit the mark with this analysis? Do you think I'm completely off base? I'm really interested to hear your comments. Good luck out there. And thank you for checking out the Pixel Lab. Cheers.